Good afternoon. Okay, I decided to do the uh, capacitor wizard and um, also show you in comparison with the blue ESR meter. And to uh, give a little um, demo a demonstration here and as well as uh, looking at the waveform of these meters on an oscilloscope. So the first thing you want to do, uh, is they tell you that to verify the how they do it at the factory without actually, I got the book here on it, on the uh, on the capacitor wizard. Uh, the, what they do when they calibrate them is they use precision resistors. So it's basically an AC ohm meter uh, running at about 100, 100 kilocycles. Uh, but there are different variations of different ESR meters, not at all 100 kC, but uh, anyways, I have some 1 ohm resistors here. I think they're 5%, but to give you an idea, um, so I've done this test before off camera, and uh, you put a 1 ohm resistor on here, it's going to read 1 ohm. You put a 1 ohm resistor on on the blue ESR meter, it'll read 1 ohm. Okay, so um, in comparison with the Fluke 177, they all jive. So the first thing we want to do, i got to get the camera back a little bit. Okay, I have in front of the... Fluke 177, some uh, 1 ohm resistors, and it reads 1.2, I believe. Okay, so I've got one right here. So we're going to do, first of all, here is a 1 ohm resistor. And we're reading between 1.1, actually 1.2, but it's varying, so it's probably on the threshold of 1.2. Okay, I think you can see that. Okay, so on the blue ESR meter, which is right here, I'm going to shut this off for now. We'll get the blue ESR meter over here. And I'll see if I can set that right here. Now with the blue ESR meter you have to zero it. The capacitor wizard you do not have to zero it. Alright, you zero it <clears throat> and then you put your resistor across it and there's your one ohm. Okay. So that Basically is an AC ohm meter, okay, running at a high frequency. And that's how they test the capacitors. Okay, now we will turn this off and we will get the capacitor wizard lined up on the screen here, so I'm going to stop the video for a minute. Okay, we turn on the capacitor wizard. Okay, now when you short the leads together on the capacitor wizard, there's a beep, and I believe the beep is anything from a half ohm below, I think it'll beep. One ohm, it will not. Okay. There is a zero adjustment on the capacitor wizard right down here. But you don't have to touch that because it's right on zero. Okay, so now we're going to try to get you closer in here. I probably have to go a little bit of a zoom here. Uh, let me uh, adjust that there. I'm using the JVC, which is a very good camera for 
close-up work. All right. So, as you can see on the capacitor wizard here, anything from 0 ohms to 1 ohm is good. In this range here, you've got what they call a compare. Uh, so what you're supposed to do if you get readings in here uh, is you take a known good electrolytic of the same value and voltage and do a comparison. Okay, anything in here is bad. Okay, it's quite detailed in the book, and I'm going to show you some close-ups of the book. I'm not going to give you the whole thing. So we got a, a one-ohm resistor here. The same one that I used on the other two instruments. And there is your one ohm. Okay. Now, there are ESR charts, and not all of them are created equal. I find there's quite a few differences in depends on the chart you use. For any given capacitors, uh, there seems to be some differences in them. But generally speaking, it tells you in the book, and I'm going to show you that, um, that a lower voltage capacitor will read a different ECR, ESR reading uh, versus a higher voltage one. In other words, if you've got two 10 microfarad electrolytics and one is... 10 or 16 volts and the other is 450, you are going to get two different ESR readings and that is normal. Okay, so we're going to get you to, sh I'm going to show you the book now. I'm sorry, I have to hand hold everything. Well, I'm on the tripod, but okay. And um, I already read this book thoroughly yesterday. Okay. What is a good ESR and here it's telling you, and you can read it because I'm trying to read with a magnifying glass through the viewfinder of my camcorder here. But generally speaking, ESR readings under 1 ohm are considered good. Half ohm or less is nearly always good. So, There is quite a bit of information on this, and I'm not going to take the time to read it all or give it to you on um, on this video here. It's going to take me too long. It's too much. Um, it's too difficult for me to do. So I'm going to just give you the highlights. An interesting thing that's in the Capacitor Wizard uh, instruction book here is that low value film capacitors like a point oh four seven and I'm straining my eyes I think that's thirty ohms it could be three but I think it's thirty it's so hard for me to read this stuff uh point one is gonna be uh fifteen point nine ohms uh, you can get an idea, and I've, I've run these tests on the, my capacitors, and they're all in that ballpark, okay? So it's an interesting thing that you can even read an ESR on those capacitors, although it's not really necessary, but um, it's an interesting side note here. Uh, on your specifications, um, without you know, going through too much time on this, um, it tells you the batteries you use and how much current the device uses, um, battery life, 60 to 80 hours, it has a battery low indicator on it. The interesting part is, and that's where the experimentation is going to come in, is Open circuit probe voltage is less than 15 millivolts peak to peak. I wasn't able to get that on my digital scope. However, it's telling you open probe, so that's exactly what I did. 
I stuck it into the BNC connector directly into the oscilloscope and I didn't get anything of those readings. Also it's telling you 100 kilocycles sine wave. Uh, you'll see it right there. Sine wave. It's far from a sine wave. But obviously it's working perfectly. So um, pretty sure I got the set, the scope set right because I tried the um, the time base and tried all combinations and um, you'll see the waveform when I get done with this at the end of the video. Of course this can measure capacitors in circuit and if I'm not mistaken the blue ESR will also read capacitors in circuit. So I'm going to try to find some descriptions. Uh, they mentioned something about older capacitors here. Um, you know, I've got some, a few uh, old capacitors. By old, I mean capacitors that came out of items that I might have scrapped years ago. So let me, uh, they give you quite a bit of information, which, like I say, I'm not going to take the time to uh, read it. If you want to pause the video at this time, you can, if you're interested in any one of these uh, paragraphs here, uh, feel free to do so. Um, I'm not even going to read that. I'm just going to let you pause it if you're interested in it. Uh, this hopefully would be helpful for someone that may have the uh, capacitor wizard or may not have the book on it. Um, so it's very, very handy and informative. It's about using the meter and then uh, changing the beeper uh, adjustment, but that's not required because uh, the reason for the beeper is so you don't have to look at the dial, the meter, when you're checking. So you can keep your eyes on the on the capacitors you're checking, and if you hear the beep, that means it's got a it's a good capacitor. Now it's also mentioned in the book, and I'm going to just mention this here uh, that. If you've got a shorted capacitor, the capacitor wizard's still going to show good ESR because a shorted capacitor is a low, very low resistance. So it's going to read it. It's an AC, amp, uh, AC ohmmeter. Also, you can check inductors. I was not successful in doing this because I don't have any inductors that will even read. I have little coils, very tiny coils, single wind coils, uh, and they don't show anything. But this is a conversion from what your resistance reading is on the inductor and the millihenries and I can't quite tell if that's there's microhenries in there too. The U, UH is microhenries, MH is millihenries. So uh, it looks like this is all microhenries. Okay. But I don't have any inductors that I can read. Uh, I haven't tried an audio output transformer or a speaker. Uh, but um, that's just an interesting side note on this that may be of interest to you. Then, of course, you got your math, which it might as well be written in Greek because I can't do that. That's way beyond me. So I avoid math like a poison. Okay, basically, you can pause this. I already read this yesterday. 
and it's telling you 100 kc sine wave and emphasizes sine wave. Uh, we're going to run it through the uh, scope, like I say, at the end here. But um, it's very interesting. Like I say, you can pause if you want to, uh, to read whatever you want to read. All right. I'll just hold that there a little bit and give you a chance to read it. Find shorted PC traces. So it acts as a um, continuity tester also because it's an AC ohmmeter. And we move up here. Find shorted or leaky diodes and transistors in circuit. Now, of course, I'm I'm not a transistor guy. I do have some transistors in my shop, but I really don't work with transistors very much. But you can do that. And also measure small resistors, which I just showed you. Um, it will read as high as 30 ohms, because after all, it's an ESR meter. If you got an ESR of 30 ohms, you better throw that thing out, that capacitor. <laughs> and measure small inductors, which, like I say, I've showed you before in this, um, I don't have anything. The ones I have are obviously way too small. All right, so I'm not going to spend a lot of time on this. I'm just going to uh, leave it on for a little while. If you want to read this, you can. It gives you some information. Now I'm going to move the page now. I'm going to move the page again. This is in case you're pausing it because you're not going to be able to read unless you're a speed reader, which I am not, of course. I'm a very slow reader. And I showed you this one before. So, I think we're going to do is give that uh, scope test now. Uh, I know I only used one resistor, but you get the idea, um, basically. So, what I'm going to do now is um, I'm going to get the... Um, the meters out of the way here. Okay, um, I got this in camera as best I can. So, now with the capacitor wizard, it's not in polarized. As far as I know, it's a, a shielded cable. Probably RG174, I'm guessing. Okay. So, we put the... ESR meter on. So, what I'm going to do is to take, you take my word for it, I'm holding one lead on the shell of a BNC connector and I'm going to insert this right into I'm hitting the There it is. All right. Does that look like a sine wave to you? No. Let's take the time base and change it. Now it's telling you open leads. It said right in the book, open leads 100 kc. Sine wave. So, I'm changing the time base. I have to get a magnifying glass because I have no idea where I am on this. It's going all over at 160, 170, 200 millivolts. It's all over the place. And um, the frequency is 
1.19729 megahertz, not 100 kc, okay? So that I don't know. Uh, maybe my an analog scope would show it. I don't know. But I doubt it because I've tried my blue ESR meter on my regular analog scope and these are the kind of readings I get on the screen. So um, let's just go up higher. You go too high, all you get is like a pulse, like a ringing. Now let's see what we're reading for, uh, we're jumping all over uh, with uh, anywhere from 130 to 250 millivolts. It's jumping all over down here. The frequency, which is up here, is 1.2 in fraction thereof megahertz. So let's stop this. Okay. Get that camera in a little better angle for you. Well, you can see the top upper right. So that's that's no sine wave. Now let's turn the. I, I'm not near the scope, so I don't know what direction I'm going. Um, time is 100 nanoseconds, I think. Now I got it down to 20 nanoseconds. NS is nanoseconds. So I got it down to 20 nanoseconds. That still don't look like a sine wave, but uh, maybe that's what they're referring to. For a moment, when you turn the, the, the sweep rate, it momentarily goes to a sine wave, but that's just, uh, I guess, when the way the scope is. Uh, let's, um, we're five nanoseconds now, and um, let's see, are we synced in? There's the sync line right there, the trigger line rather. So we're right there. You can see it move up and down. But it's probably pulsing. Now I got it at maximum now, which is 5 nanoseconds. That's as high as it go. So let's see what the frequency is. Still 1.54, it's jumping all over. You'll see it right there. So, that is what the um, capacitor wizard is putting out. So we'll shut the capacitor wizard off. And we're going to get the blue ESR meter out. Be right back. Now with the blue ESR meter, it's got a little clip lead, so I had to put a tiny piece of wire in there so that I can stick it into the uh, into the BNC hole here so I can find a hole I'm having trouble finding it here that's because the camera's in the way, hang on a minute, I gotta get my ugly head in the way okay that's the blue ESR meter we'll change the time base here Now, the, as far as I know, the blue SR meter, um, I could be wrong. I don't know if I have the book on it or not. I got that from my, my wife gave me that for Christmas several years back. And um, I don't think it mentions how many KC, or it doesn't mention anything about sine wave either. But um, basically, it's a pulse. So it, the book on the... Capacitor wizard, when it's telling you 100 kilocycles sine wave, uh, is not really true. Unless I'm doing something wrong, or you can plainly see that I'm adjusting. Well, maybe you can't see that. The time base is right here, and the volts per division is right here. So I'm adjusting it, and uh, I'd have to look at the... Uh, Okay, I'm down to 100 microseconds. UF, US, uh, S is 
microseconds. I'm down to 200 microseconds. Now we're going to turn the gain down a little bit on this. Now you see on the blue ESR meter we're showing positive going spikes. It's positive from the baseline up is positive, from the baseline down is negative because this is an alternating it's not, a, it's not DC. If it was DC it would only be going one direction, either up or down depends on your polarity here. Okay, so we turn the volts per division down to Channel 1 is set to 200 millivolts per division right now. So we can turn it down a little more to 500 millivolts per division. Alright, so we don't have to worry about it going off screen. Now we're going to turn the time base. I just moved it to 200. microseconds per division going this way. Going horizontal. Okay. Now we turned it up, but now we lost our trace. So we got to crank up the volts per division back up to 50 millivolts per division. Okay. But the point I want to emphasize I've been off screen all the while, that's nice. The point I want to emphasize here is these do not put out a sine wave. So that concludes the oscilloscope test. Let's test some capacitors. Okay, I had to turn the, the units a little bit because I was getting a lot of glare. Okay, now let me get some capacitors here. We've got some new old stock capacitors that I've got from Dave. <coughs> and the first thing we're going to do is we're going to test it with the capacitor wizard. And I got to get my magnifier out so I can read the capacitor. And what we've got here, dear magnifier glass, just don't magnify enough. What I use is just don't bring it out enough. Uh, we've got a 330 microfarad, 35 volt electrolytic, and let me see, is that in? I can see it good in the viewfinder here. I uh, use a magnifier. Uh, a Nichicon, 35 volt, 300. Looks like three, uh, 390 or 330. I'm telling you, my eyes. My damn eyes. Okay, so let's check it out. Now, the problem with it is you have to, with the capacitor wizard, you know that anything under one ohm is good. If you look at the meter, it looks to me like it's almost a tenth of an ohm. Okay, now let's use the... Let's do the uh, blue ESR, which is a little more difficult to use because you got to zero the leads and the thing keeps sliding down when I go to use it. But you can still see it. Okay, we got to clip the leads on and we'll see what that reads. 
That reads a tenth of an ohm. 0.09. It's close enough to a tenth of an ohm. So, these two guys are right on just about. So, uh, I have no problem with my... I've used this all the time, and the capacitor wizard is right up there. The capacitor wizard's a lot quicker to use. You don't have to zero the leads together like you have to on this. All right, so that's a tenth of an ohm. Now, the capacitor wizard's telling you it's good. It's in the green... But more importantly, it's way down on almost zero, which is what a good ESR should be. Okay, now let's get a different value capacitor. Um, a 470 microfarad, 50 volt. Let's do the, let's check the short, short the leads out, we're still zero, okay, now, point zero 0.02 ohms, decimal points on the left, so it's very, very good, point zero 0.02, now let's go to the capacitor wizard, now, being the capacitor wizard's analog, you're not going to get a precise reading. You're going to get what the gauge shows, and it's almost zero. So, it's if you look really close on this, from the zero point, there is a point one. So, in other words, it's one-tenth of an ohm. From the zero point to the start of the green over here is one ohm. So, essentially... A good capacitor is going to read within under one ohm. And they even say in the book, under a half ohm. Because you've got a half ohm listed there too. Okay. Now, normally I'd be struggling and look in my ESR chart and say, well, what should this capacitor ESR be? I don't have to do that. The gauge on this tells me. So that's a good capacitor. It doesn't seem to matter what the voltage is, although in the book it does say that I think, and I I didn't spot it here, but I think the lower the voltage, the lower the ESR. I could be wrong. I'm usually wrong 99% of the time, too. When I think I, I'm saying the right thing, it's usually wrong, and I'm always being corrected. So I'll leave it up to you. You be the judge of that. Uh, let me see what we've got here. I've got a sprig. A, oh, my eyes. I just dropped a damn magnifying, so I'll leave it there. I'll just grab another one. 10 microfarad, 25 volt, a sprig TE-1204. TE-1204. Um, it's all blurry in the, in the viewfinder. Okay, there it is. 10 microfarad, 25 volt. Sprague. It, it could be an old, new old stock. I don't know. So, let's see. Are we still zeroed here? Yep. Okay. Um, the blue ESR meter, like the um, capacitor wizard, is not polarized. One point two ohms. Okay, now this is an old electrolytic, uh, so it could be normal. Let's see what we got here. One point two. Well, there we are in the uh, in the in the yellow, and of course I can't see that. Um. One point two. Yes. 1.5, you might not be able to see that, but take my word for it. In the yellow, there's one right here at the end of between the green and the yellow. So 1.5 is over here, 1.2 is right in this area. So um, now 
that I would have to look up and find out. But these are these are new. Old stock sprigs, 10 microfarad capacitors. So we'll read this one, this one, and this one. So if I'm not sure, because it's reading in the yellow, but it's on the high end of the yellow. Uh, I would say they may be okay, you know, not a problem. Now we've got other ones here. We got some smaller ones. That uh, I'm getting hungry. We're having potato salad, ham, and tomatoes. Sliced tomatoes. Uh, let's see what we've got here. It looks like four point. Seven microfarads. Let's see. These are tiny guys. Four point seven, fifty volts. Okay, four point seven at fifty volts. They're still on the card here. So let's uh, let's see if we can get the uh, blue ESR meter to read that. They're very close together, the leads. That's one point one point three. All right. Let's see what we can do here. I might not be able to do that. These are clumsy for me. One point three. Uh, yeah, that's pretty darn close. Okay. Nothing wrong with these meters, I'll tell you. Okay, now what do we've got here? We got fifteen hundred microfarads at thirty-five volts. Let me get my hand around the back of the camera here. Fifteen hundred microfarads, thirty-five volts on a card. Now, that's reading zero, okay? Let's just make sure I'm not, okay. Now let's, let's put the capacitor wizard there. Yep, there it is, all the way over. That's, those are good capacitors. Now here is one. It looks like an oldie, new old stock. These are all new old stock. Let me try to get that in my hand because the camera will focus better if you use like your hand for the background. I can't read that. So I'm going to get, I'm going to read it to you. You probably know, you could probably see it, but. but. It's two microfarad at 15 volts. At least I think it is. Oh, that's 7.8. That's 7.8. Yeah. Look at where the uh, capacitor wizard is. Way up there. That's 7.8. we got to find out what this capacitor is. Now, because the microfarad is only 2, it might be normal. But I don't think so. I'll be right back. Yes, it's two at 15 volts. It's an oldie. 
Here is a beauty that Dave sent me. Fifty microfarads, five hundred volts, dual section. So we're going to check this guy out, Mr. A. Yeah, let's check that out. All right, first thing, the capacitor wizard. Well, you can't see what I'm doing here. Take my word for it. All right, she looks like she's reading about a tenth of an ohm. Uh, well, actually, one... 1.1 1 .1 ohms, so it's in the it's right at the border of. Uh, as far as I know, I'm I'm looking at the capacitor wizard, and my eyes, even with the reading glasses, just can't see it. It looks like it's right between the green and the yellow on one section. Let's check the other section. Can't find a damn hole. Okay, there it is. I got it. Okay, so we're getting roughly about one ohm, okay? Now let's put the, no, the blue, blue ESR shut off. That means I've got to probably zero it again. Yep. That's the only thing I don't like about the blue ESR meter. You have to zero it. It stayed zero for quite a while, but it shut off after a while, which is a good thing, I guess. One ohm. One point one one ohm to one point one. Okay, that's a five hundred volt electrolytic. Uh, you, it's too good to be used in a vintage radio. They would use something like this in a guitar amplifier. If you're running uh, high wattage, you know, high power, and they usually, you know, but uh, it's a good capacitor. Um, one ohm. I'd have to look it up. Because it is on the borderline, but because it's a high voltage, it might very well be okay anyways. It's the only one I've got. Um, now, what we've got here is 2200 microfarad, 50 volt. 2200 microfarad, 50 volt. Point oh four. That's very good. There's your reading. Very good. So that's a that's a good capacitor. Now we've got another one here. An Ichicon four hundred and seventy microfarad. 50 volt. <phone rings> Roughly quarter ohm, maybe. Point one three. That's a good capacitor. Okay, we're going to test one more here, and that should give you an idea. I got to go in the house. I'm getting hungry, and I treated myself to a nice breakfast this morning. 33 microfarad, 450 volt. A pretty capacitor. Gold. All right, so see what that's reading. Oh, it's reading about one ohm. I'd have to look it up. New capacitors, they say don't form up old capacitors, except you want to get a radio going, you see. 
but uh, I'm all for forming up new old stock capacitors that have been sitting for years. Definitely. All right, we have got point eight zero. So in other words, almost one ohm. So you've got a chart on the back of the ESR meter, and uh, my mind, my mind, memory, what the heck was the capacity of this? I'm telling you, I can't remember numbers. 33 microfarad. All right, so I never like these charts that are here. But if you're doing... What was this, 450 volts? Honest to God. Damn mind. 450 volts. 450. Well, the chart only goes up to 400. Okay. And, uh... I don't know. I can, I can never figure these things out. I get my old paper chart out. Okay, we'll turn it off. I get my good old paper chart out. I never like these charts. They're too damn confusing. You, t you, you read the voltage going up here, and then you get your capacitors. But there's too much room for error in here. So I have a paper chart that I printed off the computer. But as I said, there are differences between some ESR charts and other ESR charts. Let me just stop this a minute. To give you an example, i got to handhold this. This damn bench is so small that I have to come out away from the bench here, but here's a chart here that they're not all, they're not all the same, you know? I'm going to have to hand hold it. I, I can't get it in screen. Everything's falling all over the place here. I, I have one here. I have one here. I have another one here. Then, of course, I have my capacitor cheat sheet, which I have to refer to, because those damn nanofarads drive me nuts. I hate them. Okay. <laughs> All right, so... That's pretty much it. So, I have to refer to the ESR chart if in doubt. But the capacitor wizard saves me an awful lot of wasted time looking at these charts. So, I don't think I got the book on the blue ESR. I don't think it came with a book. Blue ESR meter here. It really don't tell you anything. I didn't get any documentation. It came in a box. It came with a battery, which I've changed since then because I've had this for, I had this way before COVID. Um, but I like it. It's it's really great. And as you saw, she's right on the money. These two meters are right on the money. And so I hope you enjoyed this video. Um. That should do it for tonight. Um, but I did want to show you something that uh, it's more of a, I do experiments, as I said before, and these videos are getting long again. So uh, it's nothing new. I just can't keep my videos short. I try to explain things to people, and I try to do it so that I don't have to answer a, a comment that I've already talked about and explained in a video because, as you know, I hate typing. So, so sometimes I'll repeat myself, but I do it deliberately to make, get my point across. Okay, <laughs> enough of the chattering. That concludes the video on the ESR meters, and I hope you enjoyed it. Take care, everybody. Have a good day.